All right, YouTube, we're back again. This is Johnny, and I'm gonna show you guys how to match this texture. Um, thank God for the homeowners. We tried to match it, and uh, we did some. Uh, we did one in the front, and we matched it pretty well. But we had lost our numbers somehow in between. But um, what we did here, we didn't show it on film, but we we kind of used a rasp. This is a rasp right here, probably about a hundred twenty dollar rasp. You can use it for foam or for stucco. We did this for about 30 minutes and we got it pretty flush. We put this so we don't step on it and break it. And what we do, we want to have this, this stucco, we want to have it somewhat semi-flush. So we got it as best as we can. We want to come here from the side, see if you can, they can see that. See the side, the gap. Did, you know, there's only so much you can do, you know, without having to try to move everything, but that's not too bad. So what we're going to do, we're going to put a skim coat with some fine cement and sand. It's just a, probably like a 30, 30 grit sand with, with this plaster cement. You can get it at Home Depot. They're blue bags. It says fine on them. And uh, put a little bit of water on here. This is pre-existing stucco, and so it's going to want to suck the moisture out of it. And uh, what we're going to do, I'm going to show you how to just, we got to have a flat surface to, to, to put our texture on top of this. So on top of this texture, this, this is a flat surface. And then you, this is your texture. And so we need to get a flat surface and then let that dry. Um, probably 20, 30 minutes, float it out. And then, then we can put our texture. But for right now, we're going to spread this out and get it done before it dries out too fast. Sometimes, you, I know guys that start from the bottom up. Um, most guys start from the top down, um, preferably. And um, that's what I'm gonna do. Start from the top down. I don't know if I mentioned it, but I uh, put uh, a bonding agent. Um, this is a very well-known bonding, bonding agent. It's a, called Weld Creek. And Weld Creek is a really good bonding agent. It's a thick, can, has a thick consistency. I was told by someone that you can cut it one-to-one -one and it'll still have the same bond strength. Um, as for this, we, we didn't cut it. We just used it straight. Now this is the bucket right here, Well Creek. We buy them five gallons, maybe a few dollars cheaper than the, or less expensive than the one gallon. I know. The homeowner just said that looks real easy, huh? You make it look easy. Oh, I make it look easy. Yeah, he, he might have been out here. How long were you out here? <laughs> Two days? <laughs> yeah. When, when you're in the trade, you learn all the all the shortcuts. I had more on the floor than I did on the wall. <laughs> or, I don't want to say shortcuts, but tricks of the trade. <laughs> he said he had more on the floor than the wall. I'm gonna float this out. Let me wet this. Rod this out, not float it out, rod it out. Okay, man, we'll hey, see you. Don't forget me on the floors if you think of somebody. I will. I will. Text me or something. Okay, I, I sure will. You. Thank, Thank you. you.
Well, it's got a, quite a bit of suction on here. It's not letting me be able to play with this mud. You know, water's my friend right now. And a little bit more water on this wall it's pretty hot just sucking up all this plastic Got some highs and lows here. Um, so what we're gonna do? We're gonna let this dry up. Fifteen. 20 minutes. I'm gonna catch my breath. And uh probably put this on pause and uh I'll show you how we float this. Um also um I don't know if anybody noticed um I was picking up my mud from my hawk from the bottom and um just a story um when I first started plastering, I was telling the homeowner, um, I was working, I was in the union working hard and one of the guys said, hey man, come work for me on the weekends. And we we're patching in windows. And uh, he didn't know I never plastered, but I said, yeah, I'll go work for you. And I was standing on the scaffold, on a probably two foot scaffold, it wasn't too high. And he loaded my hawk up even bigger than this. And um, I looked at him looked at my mud and I went to go try to get my mud and bam fell all on the floor but that was just a funny thing that happened but I was so eager by the end of the day I was taking the mud off my hop but some areas some places in the Union if you took your mud off the bottom of the hawk they would they wouldn't pay you journeyman wages 
they'd want you to take it off the top. Which to me, it always seemed like too much work. To me, it feels more natural to take it off like this. I don't lose any mud. I'm not twisting my wrist. I'm not going to have to have surgery on my wrist for always flipping the hawk. You know, a preference, however you prefer. I've seen guys use pull, pull trowels. I've seen them use uh, margin trowels. You know, but for me, it's, it's more comfortable to take it off from the bottom. Um, some people say, is, oh, they take it off from the top so their knuckles don't scrape. I've never had knuckles scrape unless I was, you know, scraping the wall with my knuckles. But preference, yeah, I, like I said, I knew a guy. He was a good plaster, man. He was putting mud on faster than anybody else. But he didn't get journeyman wages because he was taking his mud off the hawk. And I felt like that was just, a, you know, it was kind of wrong, but. You know, from my understanding, you know, the local 300 from where I was from, you know, they they were uh, the union with uh, the Canada. And so Canada, it came from Canada. Canada, the guys took their mud off the top of the hawk. Maybe that was interior plastering or something. I don't know. Maybe I need to look it up. But I'm going to um, put you guys on pause for a minute, and we'll come right back and show you about the floating. Okay. All right, you two, we're back. <laughs> I told my wife, she's out recording record today. And uh, I said, go ahead and let's, let's record. And she goes, it ain't been 10, 15 minutes. I said, well, they won't know. But it's been more like five minutes. So I've told on myself. Um, <laughs> my wife's keeping me honest, and that's a good thing. Um, so it's been about five, five minutes. The, the outside of the perimeter of, the, of this stucco patch is still wet because it has a different suction, a different um, bond to it because of the, the glue it's drying slower, but the, the, the middle of this is drying a lot faster. And so I just wanted to kind of show you what, what we do. Um, I put this mud on a little for, on, a little bit proud on purpose. And for that reason, I'm just going to come back and, and, and kind of shave it down to where, it's, to where it looks kind of flush. And when I do that, I'm kind of just, you know, le leveling it out. You know, you can use uh, your trowel, something this big, you know, you can use your trowel, um, preferably on a bigger wall. You don't want to do that. You want to use a, a rod. Maybe this is a six foot rod. You might want to use a four foot rod unless, you know, you're dealing with, with bigger areas than that. You know, you can either pull it back from the back end. You can scrape it from this. And what this does is just gives you a, a flatter plane surface. Like I said, that top still wet. And all I'm doing is just lightly putting light pressure on it. And this is uh, doing stucco here in California, Central Valley. Um, this is a uh, town of Lemoore. It's where the Lemoore Naval Air Station is. Um, it's a really good, nice little town. Small town, quiet town. Really nothing, nothing big around here goes on, but so either ways you can do it that way. It's your, it's your preference. Like I said, on, on a wall like this size, you know, <clears throat> this texture, I don't, I don't know what style of texture this is. I, you know, it's almost like a frazy texture or something, but it's almost like they just threw mud on there and then came with the trowel and flattened it out. Uh, but th this is where there's a, a previous patch right here, also right here, right here. So if, if you show them that wall, that's kind of more of the, the, the original texture they had in the house. This one, where it's over here, it's a little bit bigger, but we're, we're not going <clears> to <throat> go into that area right there. We're just going to focus on this this area right here. You know, when you're doing patches, you got to come, you got to get to a point where you got to stop, you know, plasters, you know, that's the hardest thing to do, you know, do I keep going or, you know, or do I just stop it right here and let this look like a patch. But for the most part, we'll, we'll match this as, as close as we can get it, maybe 95, 98, maybe even 100%. Um, but it takes a lot of practice, a lot of time. Um, took me several years to learn how to texture. 
and another couple more years to learn how to match a texture. And um, so let me get, get to it. Get, want to get rid of this hot. Get me a flat surface. It's all right if you gouge that out right there. We'll uh, get some of this mud and just throw it right back in there. I'm going to use a green flow. This wall is just for some reason doesn't like me today. Trying to put some, some of this water back in this wall so it doesn't suck it all out. Give it time to dry right. For some reason, I'm having the hardest time with this material.
little bit wet. I probably could have waited <laughs> for 10 or 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. But, you know, sometimes we plasters get a, get a little, little rush, you know. We like to get in and get out, man. Make, make that dollar bill. You know, but sometimes getting in a rush can affect your work. And, you know, you always want to make sure you... you, you don't cut corners. I know I said it earlier, cutting corners, but it's, it's really the tricks of the trade. You know, um, on this this house, you know, it's got probably over, and this house is a old house, maybe, I want to say 100 years old. It's not pretty close to it. And it's got maybe I don't know, I'm taking a guess, maybe 10, 15 coats of paint. And that's why you get that that smooth, smooth look. And I was just wanted to use the finer sand so it, it mimics the smoother look. And you know, I can probably use my trowel just to kind of make it a little bit more smoother. And when we go to put that texture on, you know or when the homeowners go to put the paint on, they're, they're not having to put, you know, 50 coats or 15 coats of paint just to make it look like that. You know, so you definitely got to know what you're doing. Can a homeowner do this? Yeah, why not? I mean, he almost had it. Um, if he probably would have had the right tools and Someone here to maybe overlook it. He probably could have done it. But he was almost there. But it, he just had a bunch of highs and lows. And, you know, like I said, it takes takes years of practice to, to be a plaster. Um, a good plaster at that. Um, I'm not saying I'm, I'm the best. You know, I'm, I'm just saying that you know, I, I do have experience, and <clears throat> experience makes up a lot of being a plaster. You know, it's just that having that experience and having done a couple of these, we, we know what to do. Um, are there different ways to do it? Yeah. A lot of different ways to put mud on. Like I said, see different guys. I've seen one guy put mud on with a pair of church shoes. Did I do that? Probably not, but I like wearing my church shoes to church. But, um, here it is. This is our our base coat for the, the finished coat. I'm going to go ahead and let it dry for a little bit. You know, because the edges are still wet. And I don't know if my phone's gonna let me pause it for this long. If it don't, then I'll, I'll just continue on another short video showing us putting the texture on. Um, just wanted to show you YouTubers out there. Uh, I'm fairly new to this. I've done it a couple of years ago, maybe one or two, and that was it. But I just felt like a desire to Kind of show the world, you know, how we apply stucco. It's, it's real nice when you got someone to show you. You know, I I look on YouTube to, you know, I'm, I'm actually a certified YouTube mechanic. And, yeah, you know, that's my second job. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know. Um, but, yeah, it's great to have somebody to show you. Um, you know, especially just go online, hit a button, type in a few names, and it brings you to a page. But uh, this is uh, the base coat. Uh, for our finish, we're going to let this dry for another 30 minutes. Probably going to have, have lunch with my wife. Then we'll come on back and put the texture. All right, see you guys in a few minutes.